أنتم مبتسمين وعلى آله وأصحابه الجمعين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له أشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله ما بعد This is the third and last part of the seminar for Surah Al-Fatiha Explanation, Benefits, Recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha Wa Nasrullah Tabarak wa Ta'ala Yaqta'alina jami'an min rahmatihi wa fa'lihi jalla wa ala And I ask Allah to open for us the doors of his mercy and his blessings and bounties upon us all, ameen Some might say, while we're talking about death, where the potential civil war, race war, the heels of the aftermath of what happened at the Capitol, while we talk about current affairs, we talk about the past, how things are more important, and so forth. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned al-ibadatu fil haraj kal-hijrati ilayya al kamaqah that worship, doing acts that are pleasing to Allah, ibadah, at the time of haraj, fitna, killing, fighting, he says, like one making migration to me, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In other words, can't control what's going to happen from one moment to the next, one day to the next, one week to the next, one month to the next, one year to the next, from one place to another place. You can't control these things. They're all in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you have a responsibility to try to foster and to uh, litigate and direct your soul in the right area, in the right direction. So if a person has the ability to engage, to establish, to be connected, to be devoted to some level of worship at the time of mayhem, confusion, fighting, killing, then your soul will be safe. You can guarantee if Allah rights for you to get caught up in that fitna, hurt, maimed, or killed, that your soul will be connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that process. It won't prevent you. It won't distract you. It won't keep you from being able to have your last statement, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. It will prevent you from going out in a bad way as people normally do when they're not connected their soul to Allah. And Allah mentioned that the greatest thing is the remembrance of Allah and Allah He knows all what you do. So this is why we chose to make this seminar during this time. We ask Allah to give us strength, to give us reward, to save us from the harms of one another. Make us from amongst those who are thus successful. I mean, recitation of Al Fatiha and brief explanation to the seer. The first thing is the Basmila. Basmala. The Basmala. And they said the Basmala is to say Bismillah Rahman Rahim. So the statement has a name for it. Just like the Surah has a name for it, and the statement Bismillah Rahman Rahim is called Basmala. Bas with the A sound, while the statement itself is pronounced Bis, the name of that statement is Basmala. So this first part to say Bismillah Rahman Rahim, the greatest explanation for this is the statement of the Prophet in the hadith that he used to say. And this is something you say in the morning, like after you pray your fajr, after you pray your morning prayer, and after you pray the maghrib prayer. The Prophet would say, Bismillah, Livi, Bismillah, with a 
Allah's statement, Al-Ladhi, He is the one. Ma'asmihi shay'un. Ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi. Wala fil samai wa huwa samiul alim. Bismillah al-Ladhi, I messed it up. Bismillah al-Ladhi, la yadurru. La yadurru. So la yadurru means nothing will harm you. Nothing will harm you. La yadurru. Nothing will harm you. And sometimes you could be affected by something, but normally when Allah mentions harm, it means to wipe you out or to pull you from the objective. So la yadurru, that thing won't stop you, it won't impede upon your belief, it won't wipe you out. La yadurru. So the prophet in the beginning, he said, Bismillah al-Ladi, with Allah's name it is. That thing, saying in Allah's name, la yadurru. Nothing will harm the one who says Allah's name. Ma'asmi he shake one with anything can out the well at the Sama'i and the heavens of the earth. Or who has Sami with Ali. And Allah is the one who hears all and he's all knowing. I remember being in Yemen. It was common if someone tripped, you know, like you walk and the ground is higher in one place, lower in another. So you walk and you're not looking and you trip, you almost fall. And they will say, Bismillah. Not, you know, not knowing, you know, you're learning, you don't really know, trying to figure out why do you say Bismillah? But then once you learn that hadith and someone told you the context, you understand. He's saying that because he just, something happened to him. He wants the pain to go away right away. He wants to be focused. And moreover, you get a barakah. Allah gives you something special when you mention Bismillah. So this is why the Prophet mentioned this hadith. Because of the blessing, the barakah, and what Allah Azza wa Jal will protect you from by saying His name. That's why the Prophet said, Bismillah al with Allah's name, by saying His name, Allah, La Yaduruhu, La Yaduru, La Yaduru, Ma'asim He Shay'un, La Yaduru, Ma'asim He Shay'un, Fil Awdi Wala Fil Sama'i, nothing will harm Him in the heavens nor on earth while He's saying Allah's name. With true belief and conviction, for who is Samir Ali? He is the one who hears all, and he is the one who knows everything. Hey, so this is one of the reasons that the Bismillah, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, is at the beginning of every surah, including Al Fatiha. And the argument is: Is it part of Al Fatiha or not? Because it's seven ayah, but if you count the Bismillah, it appears to be how many? Eight. Eight. And the only way it could be seven, counting the Basmalah, then you have to join Sarat al Ladina and Amta Alayhim. That's number six. And then you will have to make Ghayr al Maghdubi Alayhim Wala Dalin one total source, one total ayah, pardon me. Where actually Ghayr al Maghdubi Alayhim is one, and then Waladalin is one. But grammatically you could connect them and say it's one statement. That's the only way you can still get seven out of Al Fatiha with the Basmillah. If not, then Basmillah adds the eighth one. So the scholars they said two things. Either Ghayrul Maghbubi Alihim Waladalin is one which makes it seven that Allah mentioned in the Quran for the Fatiha with the statement Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim or Ghayr al-Maghdubi alayhim is six waladhalin is seven and the eighth one is part of al-Fatiha but it's not <coughs> it's part of it but it's not one might say how could it be part of it and, and, and not part of it just as Sulaiman in Surah Sabda the surah about Bil Qais, the, the Queen Sheba. In the beginning is Bismillah Rahman Rahim. And then towards the end of the surah, when he wrote the letter to Bil Qais, in that letter Allah said, Innahu min Sulaiman wa Innahu min Sulaiman wa Innahu Bismillah Rahman Rahim. And Allah mentioned Bismillah Rahman Rahim. A second time in the surah because it's part of the Sulaiman actually wrote in the letter 
shortened the letter to the Queen Sheba. So although it's in the surah, no one can deny it, it's not part of the surah. But it's in the surah, Sota, Yani, uh, 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 Sheba, Yani, Sabda, the surah talking about Suleiman and Queen Sheba. So likewise, it's in Al Fatiha, it's part of it, but it's not part of it. Now, when we talk about counting the seven, most scholars said, according to the Hadith of the Prophet, it's not part of it. Although some scholars mentioned it is, and they try to combine like the Mazbubi alayhim with Wallabani, but we know that the Prophet mentioned that as seven ayah, and the Bismillah is part of it at the beginning of it, but it's not part of the seven. Tayyip. So the best way to translate to understand Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is some people say in the name of Allah. It's rather is with the name of Allah. With the name of Allah. You know. And this in the name of Allah is like a kind of Bible type connotation to try to copy, you know, to keep it in line spiritual with what we know from translation of the Bible. But Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim with the name of Allah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. And basically, this statement, you don't see the action. Like when you're writing something, you should say Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Or when you're going to drink, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. So normally you say, Ana Ashraf, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. I'm going to drink in the name, with, the, with Allah's name. I'm going to write with Allah's name. I'm going to do this action using Allah's name. But because Allah's name is more loftier than your action, then they write the statement, and then it's assumed that that person is going to do an action that comes after the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So the best way to understand this statement is you're doing the action seeking Allah's help. You're doing the action with the help and assistance of Allah and his other name, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah. Allah, his name, Allah is the greatest name. And they said this and is, is, is extracted from Allah, which you, if you change Allah, you get Ilaha. From that is, yani they said, Mushtaq Allah. So this is a grammatical term, but basically this term, Allah, is the greatest name of all of Allah's names. And then the second greatest name is Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahman. And from Ar-Rahman, the derivative Ar-Rahim. And that's why Allah mm -hmm. and um, uh, in the Quran he mentioned uh, He said, which one should we call on? Should we say Allah or should we say Ar-Rahman? And then Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala Yani told the Prophet to say, Ayyum tadu yani falhu asma al husna. Any one of them you choose to say yeah, uh, uh, Allah or you say Ar-Rahman, they're both they're both from the great names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Bismillah Rahman Rahim in the beginning of the Fatiha for 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 blessings to to receive the blessing of Allah because this means you're seeking Allah's help. By saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the ba there, they said this ba, it signifies seeking Allah's assistance. Then ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is added because everything is out of the mercy of Allah, ar-Rahman, the one who gives all of the mercy, ar-Rahman. And then ar-Rahim is derived from ar-Rahman. And all of them come from um, Rahman. Rahman, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim come from Rahman. Just like the womb, Rahma, Rahm, the womb of the lady. All of this comes from one word. So they said the Rahman, Allah wasn't Fa'ad, Rahman, I wasn't Fa'lan. Rahman, I wasn't Fa'lan. Like you say, Fulan, so and so, or Atashan, um, I'm thirsty. Those terms have the same pattern. And they said the reason a Rahman is structured the way it is. Because this term, Ar-Rahman, it is for the Muslim and the non-Muslim. Mm. Ar-Rahman. Think of Rahman. The an is two, meaning this way or that way. 
Whereas Rahim, you don't have that same pattern. You just have Rahim, or Rahman, Fulan, so and so, Arabic. Atoshan, I'm thirsty. Ta'aban, I'm worn out. Those words have the same pattern. And they said that Ta'aban, being worn out, is a mercy from Allah because it shows you that you're weak. But after you're tired and you rest, another mercy from the other perspective, Allah rejuvenates you. Atashan, thirst, shows you that you're weak and it shows you the benefit of water. But after you're thirsty and you drink, then you become someone who is not thirsty anymore. So you see, those word patterns show you two angles of Allah's mercy. As opposed to a Rahman and a Rahim having another pattern, a Rahman shows you two sides. So a Rahman, the two sides, mercy for the believer and the non-believer. A Rahim doesn't show you two perspectives, but it only shows you a lot of, and that's why the Prophet said the Rahim is a special mercy. The name a Rahim denotes Allah the one who's going to have the special mercy only for the believers. So Rahman, the name that he has that shows mercy for the creation at large, the believers and the non-believers, all that he created. And then a Rahim, a lot of mercy that he has especially for the believers. So this statement has barakah in it, and this is one of the main reasons it's before every surah except Surah Al-Tawbah, and it's at the beginning of al fatiha Then, Alhamdulillah. We're going to come back and recite it at the end. Alhamdulillah. Some people said, why didn't Allah say, uh, hamd. To Allah belongs the praise. Why did he say, Alhamdulillah? Because the lamb here means for Allah. So why didn't Allah say, Lillahi hamdu or Rahman or Rahim, why did he not reveal it like that? Because Alhamdu, being at the beginning rather than at the end, has more meaning to it. And it shows that Allah is praised no matter what. If you say, Walillahi Hamdu, this only means after Allah blessed you with something. Allah gives you something, you say, Alhamdu Lillah. When Allah don't give you something, you say, Alhamdulillah. But if Allah gives you something and you say, Walillahi alhamd, and this is a statement that the Prophet used to say, Walillahi alhamd, we know this from what? Eid. Walillahi alhamd, yani, and all for Allah is all praise. Why? Because He gave us after fasting, the benefit of fasting, the ability to fast, the mercy of fasting. The sins being removed as a result of fasting, a man being increased as a result of fasting, reading the Quran during the month of fasting. And then in the end you say, Walillahilham. And for Allah is all the praise. But that carries a different meaning when you say Alhamdu first. Alhamdulillah, the Prophet used to say, Ala kulli hal, ala kulli hal, meaning whether something goes your way or not, say Alhamdulillah. Whether Allah gives you or withholds, say Alhamdulillah. Why? Because all of the credit as Alham here, it means saying, thinking, mentioning, feeling good about Allah at all times. Even when something happens that's a calamity, the Prophet will say Alhamdulillah, all the praise belongs to Allah no matter what. Why? Because in that calamity, guarantee you that's some good. In that calamity, there's some blessing, a mercy, or something that you're going to gain out of that. So, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, this is what you think about when you say that statement. That no matter what, good or bad, whether you see it or you don't, whether Allah gives it to you with holes, Allah is due. It's befitting that you praise Allah. You think good about Allah. You say good about His name. You say good about Him Himself. You think about Allah in the best way, you give him the praise no matter what. Rabbil Alameen. Rabbil Alameen. Rabb is indicative of the one who takes care of, he gives you what you need, he provides for you. And Alameen 
means kullu ma siwa Allah, everything that's created. Alameen means anything, humans, creations, um, that are um, like trees and clouds and insects, bugs, jinn, humans, water, this is considered alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman, name of Allah. Ar-Rahim, name of Allah. And they said, going back to Alham, Alham can only be used for Allah. Alham only be used for Allah. You cannot use Alham for a created thing. Likewise, Ar-Rahman, nobody can be Ar-Rahman, only Allah. But Rahim, can somebody else be Rahim besides Allah? Yes. Prophet is, yani, Allah calls him Rahmatan lil alameen, a mercy to all mankind. Now, somebody could be Rahim. Yani, bil mu'minina ra'ufu rahima. To the believers, that means a mercy, full of mercy, the prophet. But Rahman, nobody can be Rahman, only Allah. A Rahman, the one who has mercy for all of his creation. A Rahim, the one who has mercy just for the believers, a special mercy for the believers. Malik Yom Adin, Malik Yom Adin. There's Malik Yom Adin, Malik Yom Adin, and there's Milik Yom Adin. Malik, Milik, and Malik. Those three are correct. Malik Yom Adin, Malik Yom Adin, and Milik Yom, Milik Yom Adin. Milik, Malik, Malik. All three of them correct. It said Malik. He owns everything. Malik, he owns everything. Malik, he's the owner. But people can be Malik too. Malik is Sayyara, he owns the car. Malik is base, he owns the house. Malik, Malik. Malik, the one who owns that thing on the day of judgment. Malik, Malik, Malik. So someone says, Maliki Omidin. Somebody says, Miliki Omidin. Maliki Omidin. All of them correct in the Salah. All three. Malik, he owns everything. Malik, this is the one who owns on the day of judgment. Malik. Malik, he owns everything. And this life he after. Malik, on the day of judgment. Malik, yani, same thing. He's the owner, yani. After the resurrection. Malik Yom Adin. Yom Adin, this is a mean the day of religion. Deen here means action. Lakum Deenukum doesn't mean you be a Christian, I'll be a Jew. It means you have your way, you have your actions, I have mine. So Malik Yom Adin, Yom Adin, the day when Allah is going to give the people what they deserve for their actions. If you deserve bad for your action, Allah is going to give you that. You deserve good for your action, Allah is going to give you. He's going to reckon, you know, give out the, you know, rewards, give out the rebates. Iyaka, some people say Iyaka. No, it's Iyaka na'abudu wa Iyaka nasi'in. Iyaka. And this statement, normally you would say, La na'budu illa Iyaka. Iyaka normally comes last in Arabic. Because it's a pronoun, the mirror. It's the mirror. Pronoun. Pronouns normally come at the end. Or it's at the middle of a sentence that's two sentences. But Allah put it at the beginning, Iyaka, to show total worship for Allah. It's like what they call balaga, balir, to make something really conveyed. Therefore, no one can understand worship before anyone other than Allah. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. So you have ibadah and yani sta'ana, seeking help. Sta'in, seeking help. And yani na'budu, worshiping Allah Azza wa Jalla. Both of them require assistance from Allah. Both of them require um, seeking His help. And both of them are a type of worship. Worship in general, worship in particular, but Allah wants to show that one of the ways you seek His assistance is through worship. As Allah said, Fasta'inu bi sabri. What else? 
What's a lot, right? Seek a law, stop to suffer. Is the action. What's a lot, amen. This is the same concept in Yaka, Na'abud wa Iyaka, Niskain. And then Allah said, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. Sometimes in English they say, um, I don't even know this English term. Sirat. <laughs> they try to write Sirat. We call Sirat. Like a rat. Sirat. The Sirat. No, it's Sirat. For the paw. Sirat. 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 Saw, saw, and there's a difference between saw and seen. S doesn't show you that in the Arabic. C and saw, sira and sira, both of them correct. If you look at the Mus'haf and you see, at that ayah, if you know sira al mustaqim, you're going to see a small um, seam. That means you can say sira or sira. Both of them correct. Both of them correct. In some recitations, Zirat al Zirat al Ladin, Ihdina Zirat al Mustaqim, Zat. And sometimes people say it because they only know how to say Zirat. They don't know how to say it like the people in India, Pakistani. But actually, it's revealed to the Prophet in different recitations, you know, uh, 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 Hamza and. Uh, Recitation of uh, uh, of uh, 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 recitation of um, uh, uh, different different recitation in um, uh, uh, Ayub Hamza those different recitations you'll find the Sirat al Sirat al Ladina Sirat al Ladina Sirat al Ladina. So, this is an extra benefit. But the point is that Sirat al Ladini is with a paw, not with a tap. Sirat. No, and it's not. It's raw. You have a medda, elongation. Sirat al Ladina. Some people say Lazina. Lazina. No, it's Lazina. Sirat al Ladina. Sirat al Mustaqim. And the Prophet said that Islam. Who are Sarat and Mustaqim? Islam is the Sarat and Mustaqim. Some people they said Sarat also means Akhlaq, character, a Tawheed, worship of Allah alone, and um, Khuluq, you know, how you act. That's such a challenge. So when we're asking Allah, if dina sirat al mustaqim, it includes help us to act right, O Allah. Help us to have good manners. Help us to deal with people in the right way. You know, it's not just, you know, guide us or keep us to be Muslim. You know, it has a bigger meaning. Sirat al ladina and anta alayhim. Now Allah is going to go back in detail to you. Who is this Sirat al Mustaqim? Who are they that you're asking about? Sirat al Ladina and Anta Alayhim. Sirat al Ladina and Anta Alayhim. Al Ladina and Anta Alayhim. Allah said the path of those. So we know Sirat is a path. Path of those who you have blessed. And another, and yeah, so the An'am, Allah explained who are those. He said, Whoever obeys Allah, for then these are those and Amallah alayhim that Allah has and Amallah alayhim has blessed and grace. Min al anbiya'i wa siddiqeen min al anbiya'i wa siddiqeen wa sali wa shuhada wa salihin. Four categories: prophets. <coughs> A sadiqin, like Abu Bakr, who was a true believer. The shuhada, those who died in the path of Allah, was salihin, and the people that are, and not in those three categories, they are the last category, they are the salihin. This is explanation, like when you're making this in al Fatiha, what you're really seeking to be upright. You know, not to be half-stepping. And we're praying 17 
rock a a day at least when we're praying five times a day, you're asking Allah, this is silly. Silly. And then the opposite of those who are sirat al mustaqim those are the people they earn something. What they earn? Anger from God. So this shows Allah gets angry. When Sab Ali he translates that the wrath of Allah. No. When the wrath comes, you finish. Wrath is iqab, punishment, where Allah finish you off. He can be angry with you and don't finish you, give you a chance, forgive you, warn you. But the wrath of Allah will change the meaning because they don't believe Allah becomes angry. Humans become angry. But Maqdu, those Allah is angry at them. Qadiballahu alayhim and another ayah. Wala'anahum. Allah is angry with them. And Allah will and he curse them. So this shows Allah, he has anger. No need to change the meaning because of philosophy. No, mean, no, no need to change the meaning because of people who have yeah, I mean, their minds up over the text. So the text comes first. I would maqbubi alayhim. And the ulama of tafsir, they said these are the Yahudi, the Jews. Because they knew, but they didn't practice what they knew. They knew, but they act like they didn't know. Waladhalim, the ulama, they said these are the Nasara. Sometimes the Arab Muslims, they say, Masihi, Masihiyin. No, they're not Masihiyin. They're Nasara. They try to give it another name. They be, try to say Christian in Arabic, Masihiyin. No, no. They're Nasara, man. Try to invent the wheel. No, Allah called them Nasara. They didn't call them Masihiyin. No, they're Nasara. People of Nazra. Nah. Pay it. So this last ayah, the Muslim scholars, they said that the Muslims, if they have some knowledge and they don't practice it, they take a portion of being like the Jew. And if they have some worship, but they don't have evidence like the Christians follow innovation and desires, then they take a portion of the ayah being like the Christians. Because the meaning of Magdubi alayhim those who know, but they don't practice what they have. May Allah help us. I mean, mm-hmm. and the meaning of walabalim, those who are doing something with no evidence, no type of religion to back what they're doing. They're just doing because it seems good or they like it or, it, you know, everybody else is doing it. No, it's not our way. So this is the basic tafsir explanation of the Fatiha. Now we're going to do the recitation. Inshallah ta'ala. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Everybody. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Again, listen very closely. A'udhu. 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 A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Min ash-shaytan Min ash-shaytan Min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Min ash-shaytan ar-rajim When you say the mean, put your lips close together Rajim. Rajim. Very good. Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim. Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. At the end of Allah's name is that they call it Ta. The old Arabs call it Ha. Whether it has dots or not, this you have to say some breath. You have to Allah, 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 Allah. Alhamdulillah, 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 Rabbil Alameen, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Don't do too much. 
this is one thing my teacher was telling me because you know you try so hard but you know really there's a whole lesson to go with levels and stuff but don't overemphasize Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alam let it be soft slow and going down like drinking something smooth Alam don't say Alamin Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. 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 Everybody say, ah. You're doing your own thing in the back of the classroom, I hear you. <laughs> Brisk, baby. <laughs> oh, Rahman, you Rahim. Again, oh, Rahman, you Rahim. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm al-Din Malik Yawm al-Din Malik Yawm al-Din Switch it up now Malik Yawm al-Din Malik Yawm al-Din Malik Yawm al-Din Malik Yawm al-Din Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka 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 na'budu Iyaka na'budu Iyaka na'budu Iyaka na'budu Iyaka na'budu Iyaka na'budu Remember boo when you scare somebody. Budu. Na. Budu. Iya kana budu. Iyaka nasta'in Wa iyaka nasta'in Wa iyaka nasta'in Wa iyaka nasta'in All together take a deep breath you got to breathe in Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in for the breathing Quran, you got to take a deep breath like the singer. You got it's from the stomach. You wonder how did he do the whole lot? Well, he breathed. <laughs> Dina Sirat wal Mustaqim. Dina Sirat wal Mustaqim. 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 Dina Sirat wal Mustaqim. Dina Sirat wal Mustaqim. Sirat wal Ladina an amta alayhim. Sirat wal Ladina an amta alayhim. This is the part people do a lot. An amta alayhim. This is separate words. An is one. Amta. Is fil wal fa'il. Fil wal fa'il is uh, action and someone doing it. Alayhim. Alayhim. And amta. And amta. Alayhim. Alayhim. And amta alayhim. 
See when you break it up, it's not alayhim. No. You're making it rent together. And amta alayhim. And amta alayhim. And amta alayhim. Sirat wa ladina an amta alayhim. Sirat wa ladina an amta alayhim. Wired. Now people going to gargle and, and gay and lesbian and fight, you know. You know. ไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกลไกล